Hello YouTube, it is your boy, B3, back with another kicking TV reaction review. As promised, we are doing Season 2 of Power Rangers Ninja Steel, more commonly known as Power Rangers Super Ninja Steel. I don't know why Sabin called them Super. I kind of wish you would have just called it Season 2. That's kind of a complaint that I have with the Neo Sabin stuff in general. Well, we have a lot of cool stuff to talk about today. Uh... <laughs> And in no particular order, I just kind of have a bunch of random notes on my lappy here. First up, I want to talk about Sheriff Skyfire. Alright, you remember when I reviewed Beast Morph for Season 2 and I was very excited uh, for the Space Sheriff Gavin-like cameo and stuff? Bringing him into Power Rangers lore and making him his own character? Well, they did that here too. They took another metal hero... And brought him into the world of Power Rangers. I love that. Let's keep doing it. I know there aren't... <laughs> I know that there aren't like any new metal heroes. And they're all old. But I love it. I love to see those metal heroes. Uh, I think Matamodius is much cooler than Galvanax. And her right hand Madonna is pretty cool also. I really like them both. We get new Zords and Ranger forms in the Zord. I'm, try I'm trying not to reiterate a bunch of stuff that I said last time. But, uh, I like the new Zord, like the kind of fire Zord. It's really cool. Uh, and I'm not a big Zord guy, so that means a lot coming from me. And then they got like a super ninja steel form that they take when they're in the cockpit. It's dumb. It's a... Last time I kind of did mention that I hate these cockpit-only Zord forms. I just do. They're pretty dumb! And if you're wondering why I'm yawning, it's because it's 12.49 a.m. It's after midnight. I, ha I just had to finish Super Ninja Steel, though. I really wanted to finish it. <sighs> but yeah, the Zord forms are pointless. They're just there to sell toys. And they don't change the Zord, how the Zord looks or anything. Uh, there was an anniversary special in here. I enjoyed the anniversary special. It, it brought lots of old rangers back. And then there were like robot clones of those rangers, evil ones. I really hope the Lightning Collection gives those to us one day. I'm sure they will. Eventually. But they were pretty cool. Uh, it had a very heavy Tommy focus. They were really sucking Tommy's dick the whole time. Uh, the writers were. And it's like... Come on, let's let's chill out on Tommy, okay? Can we just chill out on Tommy Oliver for just a bit? Even Power Rangers actors were making jokes about how often Jason David Frank returns. And I think that's because a lot of people see it as kind of just cheap. Oh, it's that original Sixth Ranger. You know, so it's kind of just, you kind of get the feeling that it's just a paycheck. For David Frank, because Jason Font is in that special too. He comes back all the time. But he's in the Christmas special too, very shortly. He comes back all the time also. But you really get the sense that Jason Font just loves Power Rangers. You know? You really do. There's also Tommy's Master Morpher, which I gotta say is a pretty damn cool idea. A morpher that can transform a ranger into any ranger they've been in the past? That's pretty cool. There are other there are other rangers that have been multiple rangers. Like Catherine is a good one. She was what, three different rangers? Why why didn't she have a master morpher? Because she's not Tommy. But she was in this. TJ was in the special. He's been two different rangers. Turbo Red in Space Blue. Where's his Master Morpher? Just Tommy gets one. No one else who's been multiple rangers gets one. <sighs> yeah, not the best. Not the best. Uh, so they're really sucking Tommy's dick the whole time. But the Master Morpher is a really cool idea, and it would be a really cool replica thing for the Lightning Collection to give us. Uh, just like in Season 1, the Monsters of the Week looked pretty cool. 
no complaints. I really like the kind of electric plug, like centipede millipede monster that like just absorbs electricity. Ooh, I should have filmed this in the morning. I do want to talk about Monty and Vic because I didn't talk about them in the last one, even though I wanted to, but I wanted to save time on it. Monty and Vic are kind of like the bulk and skull of this season. And not not every season has a bulk and skull. But some do. And, and no one will ever beat bulk and skull. But I, I just, I really don't like Monty and Vic. They don't really get any character progression. Like in the last episode, they save a bunch of people and Vic gets the 50th trophy that he's been going for the whole time. But did they really learn anything? Did they really change? No, because if he did, he wouldn't have that selfish need for the 50th trophy, I feel like. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, Monty didn't become independent. Vic didn't start seeing Monty as an equal. Because Monty kind of just simps for Vic the whole time. Like you really get the sense that Monty just wants to get railed by Vic for both seasons. And their shenanigans aren't even funny. Most of them are fart-based. Well, not most of them, but a heavy, heavy amount of them are fart-based. There's even a fart joke in the finale of season one that carries over to be the main B-plot of season two's premiere. Insane. Insane. I liked the little Willy Wonka reference one, though. <laughs> but yeah, Monty and Vic, I didn't like him. And it's not just a, oh, only Bulk and Skull can fill that role thing. Because I liked Cassidy and Devin in Dino Thunder. I did. I thought they were very good. They actually had the character progression. Um, and then we also have their brother and sister. I don't remember their name. The ones from Beast Morphers. They were really fun. Did their characters really develop much? Not really. But they were kind of, you know... Because, like, the others kind of started off as selfish and stuff. But they developed, like, Bulk and Skull have the best character development in all of Mighty Morphin. Billy gets a little bit. None of the other rangers get any. No, I don't call getting freed from brainwashing character development. That's just something that happens. Because then they just return to being who they were before the brainwashing. That's not development. That's regression. <laughs> but it's actually, and if you really think about it, it's no change. But they were already, like, good and wanting to help people. So I, I don't really blame them that much, but they should have still got more. <sighs> but yeah, Monty and Vic are the worst Bulk and Skull fill-ins I've ever seen. The show had great choreography, as usual, both in the Sentai footage and the original footage. Uh, we didn't get a Green Ranger. In the Sentai, I think there is a female... Green Ranger, she might be a villain. As I said in the last video, I have not seen the Sentai. I've only seen uh, those, those that Sentai team in guest appearances and stuff. But I know there's a green one. Just like there's a green one in uh, the Sentai for Megaforce. Ghostager? Is that what it's called? There's a green one in Ghostager, but they die, like, immediately. And I think it's kind of a driving force for Blue. I haven't seen all of Ghostager. I've just seen it, them in guest appearances as well. I wanted to start watching him, and I kind of never did. Oh, well, I'll do it eventually. I'll get them all eventually. I will. <laughs> uh, the uh, mentor returns right away in the first episode, just as we all knew he would. Still played by the greatest Power Ranger actor ever, though. Um, the writers kind of just hand wave all their powers back into existence. So apparently Madam Odious could corrupt the big crystal shuriken they get their powers from the entire time. And at first I was like, 
that's really stupid. That's way too easy. Galvanax was trying to find a way to do that for years, and he never could. But then it kind of hit me that she was a traitor and never really on his side, and so she probably just never told him she could do that. And I was like, oh, that makes a bit more sense. But then I thought, why didn't she just do it when she, like, get some access to it alone and then do it and get all the stars and use them? So it's still a plot hole, but it makes more sense. Like, I can kind of hand wave that plot hole away. Like, that's one you can just kind of suspend your disbelief on more than, oh, she just chose not to do it. But the traitor thing makes it a bit more you know, palatable. Uh, Red Ranger's Battleizer, the uh, Lionfire Battleizer thing, they don't call it a Battleizer in this season, but that's effectively what it is. And I think it is in the Japanese one, I want to say, because we started Battleizers and Power Rangers, and then the Japanese started making their own. And then there's some seasons where, like, the Japanese made a Battleizer, and then we also made an additional Battleizer. So the Red Ranger has, like, two. I think that happens in Dino Thunder and in SPD, because I think the Red Ranger has two special forms in SPD. He's got the one where he combines with a dog, and I think he has another one, maybe? That could be wrong. And then the Red Ranger has the Triassic mode, and he also has... Uh, just kind of the regular battleizer with the stretchy arms. You know? Uh, the Dino Charge villains make a guest appearance at the beginning of the season in the first episode. They help Madame Odious get back on her feet. Uh, which is cool. That is cool. Uh, the Gold Ranger gets his own exclusive form. You, we only see it a couple times. We... You only see it, like, twice. And they never made a figure of it, which is a little surprising considering how obsessed Sabin was with toy sales in the neo Sabin era. Just absolutely obsessed. But it looks good. It was a very small change, but it was a very nice change. His superstar mode, or whatever. You know, it looked... It looks good. And, uh, as I said, I like that Madame Moody is more than Galvanax. She gets her own Zord in this, and it really kicks ass, and it's powered by these ninja medallions from these four galactic ninjas who were very big foes and really gave the rangers a run for their money. And it's like, but they didn't attack all at once. If those four galactic ninjas attacked all at once with all their medallions attached, they would have defeated the rangers. And that's kind of a big thing about every Power Ranger season. And every Power Ranger season... You know, if you're watching it when you're a bit older, you're like, why don't the villains just send out all the monsters at once? Why don't they just send out all the monsters at once right away when the rangers only have base power, a full army, and just really kick butt? And in Super Mega Force, I know that the villains kind of did that in a way. It was mostly just the grunts, you know? But also, fuck Super Mega Force. And the Super Mega Force Rangers are also obscenely powerful. Like, obscenely powerful compared to other Rangers. <sighs> it's, it's really obscene. But the, the one thing I really like about Ninja Steel and Super Ninja Steel is that it makes sense. There's like an actual reason for them to only send one monster or alien at a time. To fight the rangers and that's because they're filming a tv show and each monster is a contestant so they can only use like the bots to fight with them and that's good that's a good way to explain it and i love the whole intergalactic <laughs> like reality fighting show thing it's so it's so fun it's so fun it really is god i need to trim this it's always under a mask uh but yeah, I also didn't mention last time about the non-morphed ninja outfits. They have these mostly black, like, hooded outfits for when they're doing ninja stuff and they're not morphed. They look really good. I'm surprised people don't cosplay as that more because it's probably a cheaper and easier cosplay to get together than an actual Ninja Steel Ranger one would be. Then again, I never see anyone cosplaying as the Ninja Steel Rangers. I pretty much almost always see Zordon-era stuff cosplayed. To be completely honest. 
I almost I almost always just sort on era stuff I see cosplayed. And I'm guilty of that too. The only Power Ranger cosplay I've ever done was a Neo well, not Neo Sovereign. Was a street level vigilante version of the Mighty Morphin Blue Ranger. You know? Uh so here's something fun. Those outfits are uh they are cool. They did make little action figures of them. I think I got Pink's action figure. What I did when Ninja Steel came out was I just kind of got one figure from each form, and then I kind of put them all together, and they were a complete team, and they were just each a different form. I didn't buy the complete team in every form. That would have been ridiculous. Plus, I don't think the female rangers got to use the Battleizer. They didn't get to use the Lion Fire stuff, which is a little... Why don't the lady rangers get to use it? But still. My favorite ranger was easily white in these two seasons. Uh, I really liked the white ranger. Uh, I like it when they have like a white ranger that has like pink highlights where the white highlights would have been on the other suits that weren't white rangers because uh, they did that in uh, Wild Force 2 aka Gal Ranger and it looked good in Gal Ranger. Gal White is actually one of my favorite Sentai actors. Uh, she played Baragon in uh, GMK. She's the one that did the cute roars. Yeah. <laughs> Whew. but I mean those outfits are cool and I think they're original to Power Rangers I don't know once again I haven't seen the Sentai they are cool and they actually used them a bit more in season 2 than I feel like they did in season 1 maybe I don't know I didn't like time it or anything it's just, I'm saying that's what it feels like uh, it felt like at the end of the season they kind of beat Madam Odious's big, crazy, powerful form. Maybe a little too easily. They kind of just figured out a way to take her down really quickly after she took that form. And her plot to take over the world was one I've seen a bunch. Even just specifically in kids' shows. Like, oh, use the television to control the population's minds. I've seen that a thousand times. Kind of a week end of season and end of series villain plan not gonna lie love madame odious but that was not a good call and then just like last season we got a halloween and christmas special after the show uh, ended in the last season the halloween one happened before they defeated galvanax and the christmas one happened after same with this one and i liked these specials a little bit more than last season's. Last season's specials didn't really interest me. Wasn't the biggest fan. They were very clip showy. Uh, they fought monsters they'd previously fought in the Halloween one. And the Christmas one was just. It was a clip show, pretty much. It just was. And so were these. Both of these specials are clip shows. Yep. <laughs> So the Halloween special reuses some monster suits from previous seasons, like there's a that that vampire lady from Mystic Force, and you got that uh, camera one from Dino Charge. Yeah, so those suits and, and stuff are reused, and it was a body swap episode. You all know I hate body swap episodes; they are so cliche. But this one was actually pretty different. Because the one in Beast Morphers, I was like, I don't like body swap episodes. But the one in Beast Morphers was different than the normal body swap episodes we always see. But still, there's too many of them. It feels like we have body swap episodes in children's shows constantly. And it's like, think of something else. Think of something else. Just do it. Think of something different. But this one, the villains intentionally switch with all the rangers. And then... <laughs> they they turn the rangers into a courtroom to be sentenced to death and then they're just going to live out their lives in the rangers bodies but they won't be able to use the ranger powers because their voices don't match up that was already established you have to, the, the the stars respond to the rangers voices huh. but yeah so they take him to court and it's Halloween Intergalactic Court. And according 
According to their mentor character, that is the highest court in the galaxy. Halloween Intergalactic Court is the highest court in the universe. <laughs> the judges are three talking jack-o'-lanterns. The frickin' uh... Like, kind of bailiffy, lawyery woman is basically just... She's the Wicked Witch of the West, but good? Oh my god. <laughs> It was so ridiculous. And there were these mummy guards. They were mummies that served as the police for the intergalactic Halloween court. It was the most ridiculous, shameless Halloween special I've ever seen. And that's what made it so fucking funny. I was laughing my ass ass off. When the jack-o'-lanterns did their barbershop quartet thing, I laughed so fucking hard. <laughs> that was a really funny bit. Oh my god. And, like, the first couple clips in this clip show were, like, from previous episodes. But then we get clips that didn't even happen. Because, like, the villains in the rangers' bodies are giving... They're testifying against the rangers in the monsters' bodies. And they're just making up fight scenes that are from the Sentai, but were, like, maybe a little too ridiculous for Power Rangers. Which is such a weird sentence to say, because Power Rangers is incredibly ridiculous. Listen to how I've described this episode so far. But I think they just are ones that would have been difficult to adapt or something. I don't know. And they showed those. Because it was originally supposed to be like the Rangers versus Dracula. Is what this episode was originally supposed to be. And they changed it to this. Uh, but I actually really loved it. The clip show stuff at the beginning. I was like, fuck you for that. But then we got to see the clips. That like didn't. From episodes that didn't make it into the Power Rangers adaptation. And I was like, that's pretty cool. That's a, that's a clever way to do that. So, it was very different than a normal body swap episode and very different from a normal clip show. So, you know, I liked it. Then you get to the Christmas special one. Uh, they still have Santa's personal cell phone number, which they had in the last one, but it didn't explain how they really got that in the last one. Santa's just kind of their pal. <laughs> it's very weird. This one is a much heavier clip show wise. It's it's a lot of clips and they're none of them are the hypothetical ones. They're just dumb. It's there's a dumb Christmas clip show episode. That being said, it's also kind of a sequel to the anniversary special. Huh? I mean, at the time of recording this because the, the Saturday before I'm recording this was Power Rangers Day, when I was at the Power Rangers convention. Check out those logs, by the way. Uh, so Power Rangers have been going a long time. I love the anniversary episodes and how they bring stuff back. And I, I already told you my complaints and the things I liked about it, etc. And this one brought the Dino Charge villains back. Which worked because they were in the first episode, so it's only right that they're in the special that ends the whole season. They came back, and he turned... The, the sledge turned the destroyed ship into kind of a talk so show set for Poissandra, which was really nice, but then you find out it's kind of just a way to keep her distracted and have her keep an eye on the rangers while he steals their powers. And we get to see Coda, Dino Charge Blue, who I did meet at the con, by the way. He wasn't supposed to be there, but on the last day, there he was, just kind of there. <laughs> uh, Yoshi's a cool guy. So yeah, Dino Charge Blue is throughout, and then Jason Font has a little cameo via like a holographic recording at the beginning. Because uh, the Time Force Rangers are the one that made are the ones that made the dimension hopping equipment, which they're only supposed to use in like the most dire of dire emergencies because dimension hopping destabilizes the Morphin Grid, and then in the end they use it to go to Coda's world and uh, 
have Christmas with this caveman family? Like, like Time Force Red literally told you not to do that. And Time Force, we're going to review it very soon. Uh, actually, the complete series of Time Force and In Space are on the copy table right here. I do have them on DVD now. Uh, so I'm going to pop them in and watch them all. I watched both those as a kid. And I started watching In Space on Netflix before Netflix axed it. But I know how they both end and begin. I just need to watch the stuff in the center that I haven't seen. But yeah, that's mostly it. Wasn't a big fan of the Christmas special, even though it brought all the Dino Charge stuff back. I feel like Code is easily the most popular Dino Charge Ranger. I didn't really like him at first in Dino Charge. He kind of got on my nerves. But now I love him. Now I think he is maybe my second favorite Dino Charge Ranger. I like Pink. Pink was my favorite Dino Charge Ranger. I didn't like Gold. I didn't like Gold. I liked green a lot. Black was fine. I liked red. Didn't like gold. And I loved purple. And then there was like cyan and uh, graphite and others. Silver. Is the Silver Rangers actor dead? Torin? Not Torin. That's his Japanese name, right? It doesn't matter. This isn't about Dino Charge. It's about Ninja Steel. But most people say Dino Charge is the best Neo Saban. I think Ninja Steel is the best Neo Sabin. I really do. I think they were like, fuck, this is it. And they kind of went ham on it. I don't know. I don't know when the deal with Hasbro happened. I don't know when Hasbro acquired Power Rangers. But yeah, you know, I actually really liked Ninja Steel and Super Ninja Steel. Super Ninja Steel was good. And if you want my thoughts on Season 1 and some more of my in general for the two seasons thoughts, a lot of those are in the last review. The review right before this one was for season one. Check that out. But I really liked this. Now I just need to finish Samurai, watch Super Samurai, and finish Megaforce. <sighs> Getting through Samurai and Megaforce is excruciating, though. It was so hard to get through Super Megaforce. The only reason I did that is because I love Gokaiger so much. But yeah, that's it. That's it. We're done. Uh, thank you all very much for your support. Remember to rate, comment, subscribe. Check out all the cool links in the description below. Facebook, Twitter, etc. At the time of recording this, Dino Fury Season 1 is close to done, but not quite there. Once it's done, hopefully I'll be able to jump on that uh, and get that out for you. But In Space and Time Force are next. I think I'll do In Space first. Because then I'll have reviewed the entire Zordon era. Which is the Sabin stuff from Zordon making the Mighty Morphin Rangers to <clears throat> what happens to <clears throat> Zordon at the end of In Space. Because <laughs> Mighty Morphin through In Space is all one big story. Which is why it's kind of its own sub-era. But yeah, that's it. Thank you all very much for your support. Remember to rate, comment, subscribe. Check out all the cool links in the description below. Facebook, Twitter, etc. Uh, and yeah, hopefully the comic books will give us that uh, <laughs> Ninja Steel Green. Just like they gave us Talon Ranger. And I think and I think the Green Megaforce Ranger appeared in the background of comic art too. So yeah, I'm, I really hope we get a Green Ranger in the comics. I am very behind, like very behind on the Boom comics. But we'll get there. So that's it. Thank you all once again for your support, and I'll see you all next time.